We've had some massive pullbacks due to the FTX crash. Now, many are saying that the lows are in. What do you think? I think that there's a strong chance. Today, we will look at the pr some price analysis with Paul to see what the charts might be saying. Welcome to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host, Jay Rain. If you like money in crypto and you're looking for a seasoned investor take on the crypto market, join the Rainmaker family. Do note, Paul's not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a crypto investor myself. Paul invests across many different markets. We do want to thank our Patreon members. We have a private Discord that our Patreon members get access to. Now, make it rain on that like button and strap in for the show. And let's welcome Paul from Definity. Great to be here. Uh, happy Thanksgiving for uh, all of you that are celebrating that. And of course, the US dominates everything. So I think we should be celebrating it in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I know. As the world goes global, right? Like, it's just... Uh, we should grab all the holidays from all the different countries. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, a lot of the fund managers in London and um, city financial institutions, some actually involved in news as well, decide to have their sort of Christmas, not Christmas lunches, but a type of lunch around Thanksgiving because everything just slows down so much. But um, such is your dominance. So uh, there we go. But, um, but crypto is 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. So, we are always here and ready to analyze the market. So um, some of us don't have a holiday, but there we go. Um, so fascinating markets at the moment, psychologically and actually. So we can get into this big disparity between risk on and what the crypto markets are doing. But I was quite interested by what you said in the intro that um, you, you're seeing that a lot of people are saying that there's, that the bottom is in because the people I'm listening to or I've talked to about it are still very nervous and don't think that the bottom is in. I'm not necessarily saying that that they know, but I'm just still temperature testing sentiment. And I think sentiment is still very, very negative and nervous right now. Yeah, some further contagion might happen with some big players falling out more, and that would probably bring the markets down further. If not, um, <clears throat> then the lows are are possibly in it, it, it's hard to tell when you're at the bottom right like yeah if it's going to go down further you've been through this in many many different cycles across many different industries and so the prices are exceptionally good right now and really really low we're going to look at some altcoin picks from some of our viewers and i was previewing that a little bit and some of them the price are down 96 percent from their highs um altcoins sometimes even go as low as over 99% retracement from their highs. Um, Bitcoin's down in the very cheap zone. I mean, there's so much that's so cheap. If we're lucky, we have another pullback where those that have some money on the sidelines can pick up some more. That luck may not happen, though. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's interesting from a point of view of um, if, if you're going to take a long view here, and step into the market and say, of course, there's a lot of uncertainty about whether we've hit the low or not and whether there's more bad news to come out. A lot of that uncertainty is now reflected in the price. Mm -hmm. I think if it doesn't go down quickly, then the risk will start to turn the other way very quickly because if, as the market is hunting this bad news, if they don't find the bad news, then the like holding a beach ball underwater, the rest of the risk on market is is flying away. So it, the NASDAQ, which is sometimes correlated to, to crypto, is rallying. Um, the Dow's rallying. The S&P has been rallying not as much, but it's playing catch up. The European indices are, are rallying. Indices are coming off. Uh, sorry, uh, yields are coming off and the dollar's weakening. And so all the things that would ordinarily be putting this in a bullish phase um, are still underpinning potential risk on. So it's just that this big cloud is over the sector. So if it if it lifts slightly, I think off off we go. We could see some really sharp moves to the upside. So I wouldn't I wouldn't discount that. And of course, these things tend to happen from what in my experience, they happen when everybody's not watching and what have we got? Thanksgiving coming up. So we've got a thin market. It'll be classic if something big happens through this period i mean i i think it should be quiet but it wouldn't surprise me 
um, if we see a big move, because that's that's what the markets are like. They they tend to, to sort of do the do these things when everyone takes their eyes off the ball. But I'll, I'll run through the charts quickly, just give you a, a feel for what's going on in the other macro themes, and um, then we can look at the actual Bitcoin and Ethereum charts, and we'll see where we are. Um, I mean, this is this is the rally post CPI of the uh, Dow Jones. I mean, look at this; it's just been phenomenal, straight up. Everyone talking about a crash and and how it's going to co collapse in September, October, and it's done completely the opposite. And everyone's caught short or has been caught short. Uh, I mean, we've been a bit happier, more happier about risk on because of the dollar and the other things that we were looking at. But you, as you can see, the market is being squeezed and they're still being squeezed. So potential for a retracement there, yeah, sure, because it's gone a long way. But is this going to turn around and move down aggressively lower? I don't think so. It's still looking good. Um, and I'll show you why I think this this rally could go on for a long time in a moment when we look at yields. The Nasdaq, different picture altogether. It's underperforming massively. If I just flick back between these two charts, you can see visually the difference between the underperformance in the Nasdaq compared to the Dow. But the market does rotate and it will start to look for opportunities where things haven't moved as much. And that's, again, why I put the crypto space into that that sector. Um, when they're looking for risk on strategies, they buy the most obvious ones first and then look around at the the more risky ones second. And if we look at the the NASDAQ, that is well underperforming, but it's formed a similar sort of base, a double bottom and then a consolidation. So I think they should play catch up. Now, it might it might not, but it's at this sort of level compared to the Dow. So you see, look at this little consolidation before it went up. This is this is where we are. Now, it doesn't guarantee it's going to follow. It's just that this is a technical pattern and it's a buy because it's a double bottom. So as long as it can stay above this 11,508 uh, 11, point, then I'm on the bull side. Same with the S&P, which is kind of in between the two. If the Dow's going up the fastest and NASDAQ's going down up the weakest and then in between you've got the S&P, that's heading towards this main trend line. And if it can take that out, we can start talking about new all-time highs in 2023, 24. Um, now, this is set against a lot of gloom in the global markets. Everyone's talking about inflation. Uh, we've got in the UK high uh, cost of living crisis, high energy prices. Everyone's complaining about that, especially with it being the, the winter time. So there's a lot of doom and gloom that really isn't borne out by what the equity markets are doing. And it's it's a a normal psychological pattern that you get this where the broader sentiment is negative and the markets just keep rallying. So this is why I think at some stage when this turns around, it will be that when crypto turns around, it'll be a really interesting psychological trade as much as anything else, because sentiment's going to stay negative pretty much into next year now. But whether the price turns around is another matter. Um, so looking at the two year yield, government bond yield, this is forming a clear potential, and I say potential, head and shoulders reversal. We've got the left shoulder, the head, and the right shoulder just coming down, which would suggest it breaking 4.3% yields and going down towards 4%. Um, there's a few things it's got to do before that happens, obviously, but the pattern's looking nice, and it's definitely consolidating. And our broad call that interest rates weren't going to go up as much as the market had feared still remains. I still think inflation is not going to be the problem that that people think it's going to be. Shadow stats probably show that inflation is higher. But in reality, if the Fed don't move interest rates, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It means inflation is going to run hot. And therefore, we've got to look at assets that are benefited uh, your money. In other words, buying into equities and anything else that's non-fiat, which goes back to crypto um so 10-year yields has already come off that's that's come lower and it's trading below i mean below four percent in 10-year yields i think anything below four percent is a risk on trade that that is a green light for risk on um the dollar has been uh consolidating it's had a little bounce i thought this might turn into a bigger head and shoulders reversal pattern it's sort of unclear really what the next step is because it's had it's made the top, it's had the correction, it's gone into what would be really good support from a long-term perspective um, for those that, that have convinced the dollar's going to go up. Um, 
so it's in this sort of midpoint now i'm you could argue it either way you could say look the trend is up therefore you got to buy it or it's coming off the top therefore stay with this short term trend i favor the downside because of what's going on in the macro because it looks like yields are going down um it's not as clear as it was up here, but if it can take out this neckline, so I think we're going to get a head and shoulders. This is the left shoulder. This is the head. This is the right shoulder. Um, I think this is the pattern that's going to play out. So more weakness in the dollar is, is good news as far as I'm concerned. And it might consolidate here, which would be the right shoulder. So that's absolutely fine as well. But as long as it's below this 109 area, I feel fairly confident. 108, 109 is the this, this sort of zone where I've got to start to think about, is it going to go for one final move on the upside um, to complete this multi, what would be a multi-year dollar bear trend that would then follow? So we're either there now or it's, it's going to come um, after one more move. Now, when we look at equities, equities are running ahead like it's already in. So putting those two together... I think that it's likely that we've seen the top, um, more likely than than not, but it's still not absolutely 100%. Well, what is? It's not sort of 95% <laughs> conclusive. Um, so the macro scene is looking interesting and uh, risk on is, is working very well. Um, but the big bugbear, of course, and what we're here to talk about is the crypto markets. And from last week, we were discussing the potential for a continuation pattern, which is this triangular setup here, which it did break down. But interestingly, it broke into the low and then turned around and came back again, which is, from, from my perspective, given, the, given that the sentiment is bearish, it's now on the, um, how, how can I phrase this? It's for the bears to force the market down from here because sentiment is so bearish. If anything that is not a downward trend becomes bullish. So mm -hmm. it, even if it goes sideways, for me, that is bullish because it should be inverted commas, inverted commas going lower. It should be going lower because of all the things that you've mentioned before. And this is where we get this disparity between price and sentiment. So um, the fact that it's snapped back through uh, is caught out some people because they would have shorted that low. Now it's not enough to start saying let's let's uh, get aggressively long, but it's quite a nice little short-term signal. Um, this resistance line that I'm zooming into, you can see that has been a pattern that has capped each rally. So if we get through there, and I've got this little trigger line here, which um, if I've put if it goes through seventeen two six two. Then for me, I'd be like, well, actually, that that could be that could be a buy through there because it's this pattern will have failed and the market looks like it's turning. In fact, we could probably bring that a little bit lower and say if it takes out sort of uh, what's this six, nine. Um, well, let me just save that there. So this level here, which is one, six, nine, six, zero. So if it closes above that, I'd say that this pattern has potentially failed and from, I mean, we're looking very granular. We're looking at very mm -hmm. short-term signals that can trigger and then fail and we have to reverse, et cetera. But I, I, quite, I find this interesting. I find this interesting that the market is actually rallying the last couple of days when sentiment is really negative. So from a long-term perspective, the, the zone that we're in is close to this Fibonacci retracement at 17, sorry, 14.715, which is the 78.6% retracement level, which is like the final sort of stopping point. Um, so it's gone through the 38.2, the 50, the 61.8. The last one is the 78.6. If it takes that out, then I think we're in a proper, you know, we could have another big move down, unfortunately, um, which I'm not, I'm hoping we're not going to see that, of course, for lots of reasons, but the market does what the market does. But we're in, we're close enough to that zone to be sort of itching to pull the trigger on some buys. So this is going to be a very interesting few weeks and it wouldn't surprise me if the market manages to turn around a bit quicker because that hunt for risk on will broaden out from, from the broad, from the main sectors of um, equities and bonds towards crypto. And just finally, um, Ethereum 
hasn't gone any lower or it's matched its previous low from this spike down it's not got on it gone any lower that is for me interesting and it's still not at its 2022 low it's not taking it out so it again it's the market has the, the bears should be in control given the sentiment and the longer it stays either within a sideways pattern or starts to trade up the more bullish the scenario becomes and then we've got to prepare for a very sharp reassessment of the situation yeah, crypto's absolutely gotten savaged because of the contagion effect. As Luna went down, it really kicked this off because there were a lot of big companies with essentially borrowed funds that were invested in Luna to make the, the passive gains. And so when Luna crashed, many, many projects and companies lost funds, many investors lost funds. And we've seen that contagion effect ripple throughout the industry. Um, FTX was affected by that, though they tried to hide it. And anyway, so we've just seen a shakeout of all those big companies that were affected by that beyond what they could sustain. And there's still another one in play. And maybe there's more that we don't know about. Currently, the debate is whether Genesis will make it. Um, and so that's provides some more bearish news. But even despite the bearish news the last couple of days, that's been in the subject or the subject of discussion. The market's still come up the last couple of days. And that's a good sign that people are buying at these lows and that they have higher expectations for the future. Now, whether it will break down again or not, I'm indifferent. I, I take my positions and I hold them long term and I don't trade on leverage. So if it goes down some more, great. Um, I'll find a way to buy some more at those lows. And if it doesn't uh, and it takes off from here, well, great. The bottom is in and we're excited for a long ride up. Um, we have some viewer suggestions. Now, if you would like to make a suggestion of an altcoin for us to look at, you can suggest up to two. If you write what you like about them, I will give those ones priority as sometimes we have a huge list and can't get to all of them. Um, on our suggestions today, we have Cellframe, Litecoin, and Kadena. We had two people suggest we look at Cellframe. Mario mm -hmm. wanted us to take a look at it. He said, Cellframe, they're using post-quantum encryption for safety on blockchain and bridging between blockchains. Low market cap, almost all coins are in circulating supply which are a lot of the points that I like to hear. Yeah. Cell frame is one that I own and I have been tracking, especially as it's been so cheap. So let's take a look over at cell frame. Right. So I see just as we were about to go, uh, that I've got cell frame against Bitcoin when we want cell frame against the U S dollar. Uh, let's see, is that correct? Yes, it is correct. So yeah, th this is clearly getting cheaper and, the trend is down and it's curving down. So look at these highs, that high, this high, this high, this high, and this high. So you can arc, you can draw an arc of the market moving lower. In fact, this would be a very important um, sort of element or characteristic of how the, the trend is, is developing. Um, from a technical point of view, we would draw these trend lines in. You could draw one from here to here, but this is, this is kind of the main one. So, um, it's broken through the support as well, which is not a great sign, unfortunately. Um, this is a major support level. Um, it hit there, obviously sparked this rally, which was a great rally. And when that failed here, that was the warning sign as it approached the prior low that we needed to be a bit careful. Um, so it consolidated here. When the market hits or gets close to a level that it likes, you see a very sharp bounce. So you look at this bounce here compared to this bounce here. And this bounce here is much sharper, and it tells you that potentially the lows are very significant and there is some buying interest there. So where I get concerned is when I see the market trading near lows and the ranges are very flat and, and compressed. That tells me that there's not a lot of buying interest at those levels. And the market, when the broader picture is, is bearish, um, will, will pressure lower. So at the moment, from a trending point of view, it's still under pressure. And 
I would say it does need to get through at least this trend line or at least this resistance line here at 24, 25 cents to uh, reverse this bearish picture. So if it can get back above water, if you like, this is sort of for me an underwater level where I'd be worried about touching it and how, whether it's going to accelerate. Um, if it can get back through this trend line, that's the first step. Now there's a bigger trend line and a uh, bigger resistance at 36 cents to deal with, but we can cross that bridge when step one is complete. So for the moment, I think I would wait on this. Um, if it's a great, uh, if it's, if it's a, a, a great project, then waiting for lower levels to, to sort of pick some up is, is, you know, perhaps what's going to happen here. Um, I would personally, the way I look at things, be putting a buy level or an alert level uh, through some resistance. So 21 cents for me is a good alert level. If it takes that out, I might nibble some and then add to it. And if we get sort of the reverse of this and an accelerating trend, that for me is how I'd like to build a position because it comes from the first step of the strength. If that strength doesn't happen or if it does happen and then reverses again, we've got a little cushion of support behind us where we can bail out or it will, it will you know, potentially hold the market on the first pullback from strength. Buying into weakness, um, you have to be pretty confident that it's a really good project, in my view, to do that. And I can't do the analysis that you guys can do to see whether that's the case. So I've got to rely just on the price. But I've, I've heard the name before, and I, from memory, it's a very interesting project. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. But, you know, thanks for su suggesting it. Yeah, this was a great suggestion. And so I pulled up some details. Now, I've never spoken to the team of Cellframe. I would love to, to get a feel for the health of the company. Um, as Mario mentioned, I think one of the other, one of our other viewers suggested as well, Jabari suggested we look at it. Um, here's one of the things I really like about it. It's market cap is close to the fully diluted market cap, which means a lot of their tokens are already in circulation and can't be dumped on our heads, which is what we hope, right? So circulating supply, 28, roughly 28.6 million with a max supply of 30 million 300. So a lot of those are in circulation. The only concern with that is making sure that the team has plenty of funds and that the runway is long enough to make it through this bear market because if they run out of the ability to raise money through maybe selling some equity in the company, well, then they can go out of business entirely. I do like where the price is getting. We're not seeing a fully rounded bottom, though. What we're seeing is, like Paul said, it's still going down, and so it is going to get some. Ch it is going to get cheaper now. I picked up some when it was in this range here, um, and so I'm I'm below that, and I'm okay with being below that. I'm going to watch for maybe another pickup. As far as where to buy it, it shows that it's on Uniswap on coin market cap but on coin gecko shows that also you can get it on pancake swap and so lower fees on pancake swap if you have some funds over there you can just swap for much cheaper and so as far as adding those to your metamask the easiest way to do that is come over here and if you're trying to add on the eth chain you can add to metamask here or on the bnb smart chain you can add to metamask with that button there so Cellframe, fantastic suggestion. For me, it's a wait as well. Just, I, I think it is going to get cheaper. The charts seem to strongly suggest that. Let's could, take could you just Could you just remind me what they do again? What, what, yeah, so uh, here we go. They build and manage quantum safe blockchain solutions with the Cellframe SDK. So um, essentially their, their big selling point is that when quantum computing becomes a big thing, and right now there are only a few quantum computers, but in the future, it'll be easier and easier for people to build quantum computing. The, the concern is that quantum computers would be able to hack, um, encryption that right now regular computers can't. Yeah. For sure. So what what if um, they could hack, say, the Bitcoin encryption? That would make the whole blockchain unsafe. 
And so looking to the future, some projects have really focused on building something that would be quantum computing safe so that these quantum computers, even with their immense power, won't be able to hack it and then essentially break the chain and make any wallet on that chain unsafe. Because if there's enough funds there, it could they could direct their quantum computers towards hacking it, eventually hack it, and then drain all the funds. Right. All right. Great. Interesting. Let's take a look at the next one, Litecoin, which I'm looking forward to your analysis on this. It's had a 30% run in the past little bit. Yeah. Well, this is another great example of the the fact that not everything is going down, which is this disparity of the sentiment uh, right now. So I, I love the fact that this is going up. I love the fact that this is going up against the market as well. Now, I've got no idea what the fundamentals are as to why it's going up against the rest of the market. But this is the type of thing that I would like to see happening, of course, in the rest of the market. But to kick off this new bull phase, the, the new what we're expecting, what we've been expecting for some time, the end of the, 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 the winter and the, the turnaround. So in pure market terms, this is a base. It's based out and it's producing the sort of sharp, impulsive move that one would expect for a significant move ahead. Now, that doesn't guarantee it. It's, and it's doing it when everything else is negative, which is unusual. Um, but uh, but I, I, I love this for, for a few reasons. One, as I say, because it's happening against the trend of everything else. And two, it just kind of proves that things can spark into life in a moment's notice. And so we shouldn't rule out something like this happening elsewhere. Now, this first move was aggressive and then it, it came flying back and then it's gone straight up again and taken the, the, the previous high out. So if we look at the resistance that it's taken out, this is pretty significant and it's done it fast. So this zone here, if the market cools off and wants to take some profit, around 72 would be the area that it would do it at. So that, for me, is the, the sort of retracement buy zone if it comes into it. The problem is that when you get a really good move like this, it shouldn't really shouldn't come back. It shouldn't give you another opportunity to do that. It should just keep squeezing. So everybody says, oh, if it comes back, I'll buy it. And it just keeps going and going and going. Um, that, that is the sign of a really good market. So breakout, that's why I like to look at previous resistance points as breakout points, because in technical terms, they are always a buy, even if they fail. So this breakout here would have been a failure because it broke out and then came back down again. So this is why I like to parachute out very small levels of loss, because then when you get a big breakout, those moves can just carry for a long way. And it's psychologically sometimes harder for people to rebuy something more expensive than where they initially paid for it and then got out again because they say, well, you know, I had it before and, you know, I, I lost money. I don't want to buy it again. But if you're at the beginning of a good trend, if this is going to go to $150, which it might, I'm not, I'm not predicting it will. I'm just saying we, well, you can never say with these trends, that's the, that's the potential. That's the element that um, brings in this risk against reward if we're buying it at 76 77 dollars looking for 150 with a stop below sort of 69 70 then the risk reward is pretty damn good so i like this i think this is a buy and i could be wrong it might might fail but it's exhibiting some great price action against the rest of the market where we have to be very careful is at 93 dollars should we be lucky enough to see it up there um 93 dollars is a massive level look at this resistance 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 um so if it gets to 93 dollars either you know in the next few weeks or days or whatever given the way it's trading it could be days i would expect a reaction from there and um i'd also draw in this trend line here as a kind of final marker for the the end of the bear market to say if it takes out this trend line, which is pretty far away, as you can see, mm -hmm. then um, if it's if it gets 93, I would expect a reaction. If it can keep going through that, the next big resistance would be the trend line. If it gets through that, then we're looking at potentially all time highs. So I know there's um, a few steps that it needs to do before then. Um, but 
where where we turn to neutral is below sort of the 72 level because that was the buy point and below 66 we turn bearish because it shouldn't be down there yeah litecoin is often sold as if bitcoin is digital gold then the litecoin is digital silver is what the founder the case that he was making he uses similar technology to bitcoin um, faster transactions lower cost transactions and kind of like silver to gold is the argument um, I don't really invest in Litecoin. I don't hold any. When I was brand new, I did because well, I was like, it's cheaper than Bitcoin. And um, generally, that's pretty flawed logic, but it's what a lot of us think when we're brand new to crypto, right? So, right. Um, yeah, the run on it's amazing, and it's contrary to the grain of where most everything else is. So it was definitely worth a look at. Let's take a look at Cadena. Okay, uh, Cadena is, um, so th this is still correcting at the moment. And if we look at this as a topping formation that started at $9, and it came back for a, a test of that, and then it's come down again. So this, in terms of time, if we use this as the central point, 23rd of January, and we look at the time frame to the left of that and the time frame to the right of that, it's it's fairly equal at this point here. Now, the reason why I'm pointing that out is because that would that would be kind of what you'd expect in a major top. So we've got this w top one, and then this is top two. So we can separate it out as two tops. Now, if this is a major top, then obviously there's more to go on the downside. So the argument, whilst we're below four point four seven four and a half dollars is that we should be very wary of the downside. Um, and I I would stick with that um, up to the point of the potential for it to get back over four and a half dollars, considering how close we are to it and how bad the sentiment is, is also one that it negates over four and a half dollars. So, um, <clears throat> so where it is now, it's a wait for me and I'd be braced for the downside. But the rate of decline has been fairly gradual and that other element of it is when the market breaks the level you want it to be moving quickly so i would have expected it to be closer to sort of 3.3 .3 or 2.7 dollars um, if this was a trigger of a major top and it was going to start accelerating it hasn't accelerated it's consolidated so for me um yes it is a weight but i would also use this as a kind of binary level where if it's below four and a half, it's a sell. If it gets back over four and a half, then I would stop out on any shorts and start thinking about going long. And I would use this resistance line here, which is coming in around six, 6.6, 6, but that will decline over time. Um, even if it goes sideways, that'll keep declining. I'd use that as a, a potential buy trigger. Um, I mean, it looks like, it, like, it tries to move in very smooth trends because this is a beautifully smooth trend, the way it's gone up. So it, it trades nicely from a technical point of view. And this is why I want to leave the door open for a potential buy trigger as well. And even though clearly it is under pressure and clearly it's sort of going down, if we only look at this area here, you can see how the trend is, is negative. And I can't give any buy signal on it at the moment because of that. But um, because it does trade so nicely from a technical point of view, and we could be nearing the end of the bear market broadly in crypto, I think it's worth keeping in mind what changes that bearish setup and turns it into a bullish one. So I'm pretty sure we've looked at this before. I can't remember what they actually do. It's um, been a little bit. Um, yeah, let me share some things. So going to coin market cap, one of the ways to get some good details is scroll down and you find what is Kadena. Kadena is a proof of work blockchain that combines the proof of work consensus mechanism from Bitcoin with directed acyclic graph principles to offer a scalable version of Bitcoin. Kadena claims it can provide the security of Bitcoin while being able to offer unparalleled throughput that makes the blockchain usable to enterprises and entrepreneurs alike. Kadena's unique infrastructure is decentralized and built for mass adoption because of its multi-chain approach. Now, 
a few things about Kadena on on my opinion, right? Like what's crazy is during this time when generally the market was going down, except for if you remember last fall around October is when Meta made its announcement. And this took off, started going up right before that. But look at what price it went from. From its lows around, let's see, I've got it here as well. Its so, lows okay. in August of around 30 cents, it went almost 100x between August and November. So it's retracing some of that, and it's still got farther to go is my opinion. We'll see. Um, they've broken through some more resistance levels or support levels. And so I just think it's going to come down further, especially with such a big run-up. This technology seems really, really interesting, and that's why it did so well as it got a lot of hype and steam. And that's not to say Kadena can't do well long-term. I just kind of let a lot of that hype and steam continue to dissipate and people start to become really bearish on it and forget about it. And that's when I look for a really, really good pickup. And it's getting good. I just think it's going to get even better. And if I'm wrong on that, well, then there's other things that I was right on. If I end up missing a good entry point. So right now it's sitting right at this support level. If it breaks lower to this, it could come back down even lower and get really, really cheap. And that would be exciting. And I would probably pick some of this up. Where to get it? Well, if we look at this, it's on Binance, KuCoin. We do have a KuCoin link if you don't have a KuCoin account. Um, I like KuCoin as my favorite exchange. Binance is one of my other favorite exchanges. And they do have it on Binance.us for those that are in the U.S. And then a load of other exchanges. So it's widely available. Also on Bittrex and Gate.io and CoinX, which I've used CoinX a bunch. All right. Um I wondered if we can look again at cornucopia as we looked at it last week and it's forming this interesting pattern that I wondered if you could put your eyes on it. Yeah. And while you're pulling that up, just to show the website of Kadena, um, very nice website. They're partnered with a lot of these companies, at least they say Cosmos. I wonder if underlying it's built on the Cosmos SDK. Interesting. All right. Okay. So, uh, cornucopias. Uh, this is it. Look, it it formed this base here, and then it it's broken out and it's come back to retest, which is interesting. Um, it didn't manage to extend much from here, which is understandable given what's going on in the broader market. Um, so, whilst it's above this 0 0.0150 area, I think it's it's looking very interesting because we have got a developing upward trend. And I think that's enough to warrant a small position. Um, so I would say this is this point zero one and a half cents basically is where the um, kind of stop losses start to kick in. But that should act as support. So between one and a half cents and basically 1.3 cents, I think that is that is my sort of downside maximum and then anything below 1.3 cents is a bailout level for me so it's trying to turn around and if we look at this trend it's been to the downside it's gone sideways now it's gone up it's retracing that um you know i think buying into a pullback is is fine when the trend is going up and i like the fact that it's got relatively solid support fairly close and it's at a low enough level where you could take a small position just to to nibble at it and then if this starts to run we can always revisit it and add a bit more um given the the broader scenario yeah people are going to be a bit a bit more cautious but i i just think you know um it's through this this key level and i think for me that's the that's the deciding factor that kind of turns it bullish it's almost again a binary thing but above one and a half cents it's in a bullish zone and this is too early for a reversal pattern so if it was i was thinking about is this a topping pattern of some kind and some people say oh look there's a double top it's not a double top um a double top is the, the end of a trend and it doesn't guarantee that it's going to go up either 
but that is not the characteristic of a double top. Um, so what this tells me is that there is more upside potential. Um, and if that fails, that fails. But a double top would come, we'd be looking at it if it was all the way at six cents or seven cents, all the way up there, and then it made a pattern like that. That would be a reversal pattern because when you get a reversal pattern, you're reversing a buildup of a long-term trend. And there hasn't been enough time really for a trend to build here significantly. I know in percentage terms, it is quite a lot, but this move here is the first element of reversing all the kind of bearishness that's, that's been playing out over this time. So it would be very unusual for you to do that all in one go. So for the market just to suddenly turn around and keep going up in a straight line and not pull back for uh, at all. So you have to allow for retracements, A, because it's turning around a major trend, and B, because the broader trend is actually not doing so well and the sector's you know, under a bit of a cloud. So the fact that it's fighting against the trend is very good. You know, it's like Litecoin, it's, you know, great. And this is, for me, another indicator that there are certain elements out there, certain projects and assets out there that are bucking the trend. That in the same way as when the bull market forms, if not everything is moving up, that's a bit of a warning sign. We can also flip that and say, if there's a bear market and most things are going down, if things start to fragment off that, that's a sign that the, the bear market is fracturing and it's a massive shift in sentiment that's going on. So the market shifts first, the sentiment will follow much, much later. And I like to see things like this that are breaking out and going against the market because it kind of confirms that, that there's still broader interest. And if everything we looked at looked bearish, that would be still quite a negative thing but it's not as we said earlier ethereum hasn't taken out the low and it's actually holding even though things are, uh, are bearish and there are some pockets of of strength which is great fantastic thank you paul for your analysis on these different things what because you follow a lot of markets what are you most excited about in all the many markets that you follow that you starting to see some things equities start to rally um, what are you tracking that you get excited about? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm tracking basically everything that I mentioned before is, has been really interesting. I mean, I, I think the, the biggest move that, that could come from here is, is actually in the bond markets because the bond markets have been in a massive sort of downward trend. This is a downward trend is the inverse of the yield. So the price would be going down and the yield goes up. And the fact that these are turning down or these yields look like they're going to go down is so odds with potentially where interest rates could be. I, I, and there's there seems to be lots of different markets that, that are doing this. So um, if we look at the, the German bond market, this is German bond market. You can see it's making this double bottom. So it's starting its journey of um, an upward trend. And if we look at the UK bond market, I mean, look at this. This is it's been flying higher. So from that debacle that we talked about a few weeks ago, when Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng, if for those of you that mm -hmm. are following any of the UK politics, um, they caused this big collapse. Well, it's been reversed in and and more. And it's again today. Look how strong our bond market is. So, so this is this is really exciting for me because it does mean that yields broadly are going to be below the level of inflation and hard assets um anything that's non-fiat has to respond and it's just a question of when crypto is going to be that brick that's being pulled along by a rubber band it's not going to move for a long time and somebody might even have their foot on it stopping it but that's going to come off and i think it's going to go flying so um, I think there's a lot to be optimistic about going into next year. Everybody's talking about property market going down, and I don't think that's correct either, given the interest rate environment. I, I think there's a lot of gloominess out there that actually the, the equity markets and the bond markets are just saying is wrong. So it's it's a good time to be excited about where these broader opportunities are. Um, gold has done pretty well and silver's done pretty well. Gold has hit a really good resistance point. 
um, which we marked out, and it's broken a downward trend as well. Um, silver, so it's interesting when you were saying about Litecoin being digital silver, uh, silver's actually been outperforming gold at the moment, so I thought that's, that's <laughs> funny. I wonder if there's a, a correlation between silver and Litecoin, and I was st starting to work out in my head whether I should be tracking that. Um, so, but the correlation between silver and gold has been an interesting one, and many people have been piling into silver, um, just because, again, there is a kind of spread between the two, and, and and um, it got a little too far, and now silver's coming back, and that's that's looking really nice. So, um, so protecting yourself against potential inflation, which these governments are going to uh, try and inflate away the debt, the huge debts that they've they've built up. I think we've got to focus on that. Is that's why these the Bitcoin was created in the first place, and um, whilst there's a lot of negative news out there. I think it pays sometimes to just think about what it's being valued against. And that's that fiat currency that's being printed to oblivion is um, is not necessarily a better a better asset. And um, hedging it in something, some other products could become far more compelling. So, I mean, it's always compelling to a certain extent, but it's definitely going to be the the um, the strategy that's that potentially could stay with us for many years so so i'm i'm excited about the equity markets i'm excited about risk on i'm disappointed that that crypto's in the state that it's in at the moment but i'm still optimistic that not everything is lost here and and it could be from a sentiment point of view a very key low yeah Sometimes we get lucky and get some extra cheap prices and you can look at it two ways. You can say unlucky. Um, and for those that have completely used all their funds, it feels very unlucky when it dives down for cheaper prices like this. Um, for those that can allocate some more and want a dollar cost average in, it gives you a lower basis price. So you're able to pick up some for cheap. So thanks for joining us, Paul. We really appreciate your time. I'm sure all of the audience loved it. I know I did and learned some things. So thanks, Paul. Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. And happy Thanksgiving. All right. Remember, the crypto market is slow right now. Know that good decisions made during these pullbacks lead to life-changing ones when the market turns around. This wrap is for all of you to reinforce the principles that I share that make all the difference in higher returns. To the space, chasing all of the gains, chasing yeah. the pumps and all of the hype trains. But like in life, uh, shit, right before you could, was supposed to buy when it was pouring like a rain, make it should. Sure. Sure. Why when it's down, don't chase the boats that I miss, uh, cause I always made the time in mind. I take the one out, cause I'm patient like that, hands off, wait for the right time. I sell when it's high, I buy when it's low, they call me rich, they call me smart. I'm just a rainmaker running the show Calculated investments, I don't leave with my heart uh, Principles are simple, they're leaving a lot yeah. Why when it's boring, just gotta be smart yeah. So when it's hype, like all the channels they pump it yeah. That's when I was selling your parabolic and dunk it They call me rich, they call me smart uh, I'm a rainmaker, making my own star I'm with the future, learning the past yeah. Made the time fly by, years going so fast so The game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh, Time is never better The time like the present The next five years is a gift And it's feeling like heaven I'm committed to learn Studying to know that Nothing comes easy But when knowledge again gain show Sticking out this wrong Cause soon will come a bear market Learning and growing And when it's slow would be the target They say it's come out Bitcoin is dead The massive decreases Can get to your head Sticking around The time is better Strong like that I'll let the others be fretters Two years time The ball will bring back the gains That makes it worth the effort Cause here comes the rain So let's go rain makers Let's make it all happen The goal with the hate They the haters be crapping I'm here for five years Let's do this together the time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker
maker, making my own star. I'm with the future, learning the past. Making time fly by, years going so fast. This game plan is mine, I'll own it now. When I reach the top, hey, it's asking me how. Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love. And I'll follow what I'll learn, not relying on luck. Uh, haters be hating. Time to slow down Dressing what they say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough And that's what makes me special, simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh.